this notification came up on my phone. Don't ask me why I have no RTE news notifications. I've had them since COVID. But <laughs> this one came through this morning and it was like the sprawling, never ending. Remember, this is RTE news. Never ending crisis at RTE has plunged to new depths and could now threaten the government. <laughs> like RTE are reporting about RTE. About RTE. The government. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's like letting them know. Or is he might fuck? do this. It's Aren't you? So, it's just Ireland is such a small country that this has to happen. <laughs> Hello and you're very welcome along to the Unpopular Opinion Podcast. My name is Jen. And I'm Carla. How the fuck are you, Carla? Oh, I'm fucking fine, Jennifer. I'm a little bit tired. It's been a busy, busy week. I'm a busy girl. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a fucking mad week. I'm getting all the... Oh, 11, 11, make a wish. Me. Cross my fingers. That's for you. That's for you, listener. Thank you. Make there a you wish. Go. I hope they come true. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been... It's been a wild week. It's been a mad time. I love, there's just something so wild about Ireland being as small as it is and having to do stuff like that. It's like its only major broadcaster. Like I don't have, I don't, for some reason, I don't have Virgin Media News notifications coming through. So it's only RTE. And like the biggest, well, I'll go with conspiracy theorists now. Like the biggest thing at the minute seems to be the ongoing crisis at RTE. I'm like, what are they distracting us from? What what is the ongoing crisis though? Oh, does it, it's just just more stuff coming out about like where more the big. money was going. More and, big, like yeah, and like it's the there it's the resigning without explaining what actually happened for me. Like, what do you mean? Because like it's all these people are paid by basically the the taxpayer. Yeah, because RTA get their money from the exchequer as well as the advertising board. Like they need to be accountable for stuff because it's taxpayers' money that goes into the pot mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. when people are finding out that like so many thousand euro were paid for like flip flops somebody resigns <laughs> and then but they don't they don't have to explain themselves do you know what I mean they can just like oh, fuck understand. off and they're taking these big mad packages before they leave as well it's just it's wild it's wild 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 yeah and like Ireland AM are loving it <clears throat> <laughs> so oh <my> <laughs> I love seeing a clip coming up on my timeline where they're just like, oh, we have you in. We have to talk about the crisis in RTA. I was like, they're loving it. They're like, Love. oh, we have to. Absolutely. It's really like, it's really like, mommy, I'm and I being good. I'm and I yeah. being good. <laughs> Such pick me behavior. Yeah. <laughs> or virgin, whatever you want to call it now. I mean, fair oh. folks to these lads, you know, they're your rivals. You have to go out there and be, be who you want to be. Yeah. Do what you got to do, you know. <laughs> I do what I gotta do. You know? Gotta do what you gotta do. And, um, you know, there's two parties in this. People were hurt. And one being RT, RTE. Being the one that hurt. The other person being the taxpayer. The one who's doing the hurting. <laughs> no, who's being hurt. Who's being hurt. Sorry. <laughs> and if you don't know that reference, that was Liam Payne at the Oscars talking about, for some reason, Will and Jada Smith. And I'm gonna go out and whip limb and say he was yipped out of his face. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go and say that there was something else at play there. Yeah, not not a million percent sure, but he is dropping new music, and every single listener keeps sending us his like fucking Instagram. Like it's going to seem. Like we're his number one fan, we get sent to stuff. We did, so much. But, but we did this with Jason Derulo. We talked the piss out of him, and now we're going to see him. I <laughs> to know. be fair, like if I if Liam Payne ever did a tour. We won't be going to see him, to be fair. True. Uh, you'd have absolutely. To, you know? I'd have to see them dance moves. Oh god. Yeah. You'd, I know. Have, you'd have to. Yeah. Have to. We would, we would. And I think it's real like, especially because okay, and this is gonna be it's not outlandish, but I I have to like Justin what Justin Timberlake is doing now, I feel like is gonna be lean pain, do you know? But for some reason lean pain is doing it like a decade earlier than he should be. But then I remembered that one direction was Two when they started, yeah, they were two years old. Yeah, but it was also 2010, so like they've been around ages. <laughs> the millennials gonna come out with me now. That was only three years ago. <laughs> Literally, 
There you go. Emma Doran put out a video and she was like, oh, you wouldn't know I was turning 40 this year. And she was like, yeah, it was only like three or four years ago. And like the caption on the screen is talking about 2010. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was three or four years ago that I'd, I'd have to say but yeah so that is um I just feel like that they're the same person even though they're not but they kind of are mm, you know yeah same behavior but I feel like Justin Timberlake got away with it oh that's because he was he was in a time where you could get away with stuff like we yeah, were all true. misogyny like we yeah. were mis- we were all misogyny we were all then. misogynists well it was bro like it was bro culture wasn't it it was yeah. like Really that was. whole time was like very American and like it's like even when you think about even when I think about that time it's like when we were watching MTV we had this conversation on the podcast when we were talking about the halftime shows or sorry mm-hmm. on the podcast on the Patreon we did another episode by the way six year a month you get five extra episodes or you can hear me and Jen really deep dive but we were talking about Eminem's music in particular because mm-hmm. like that has not aged well but there's so much stuff that hasn't aged well but if you think about that time like we were watching Spring Break on MTV. Mm, like Girls where it was Gone just Wild. Girls Gone Wild. And like all this mad stuff just constantly going into our brains where it was like lads could say whatever the fuck they wanted about birds. Yeah. And get away with it. And openly and obviously sexualize them consistently. Mm-hmm. So mad. Anyway. And I was actually, do you know what it was funny? Because um, remember I was saying... <laughs> somebody uh, wrote, wrote into the DMs they were like uh, I'm fucking screaming at you saying Ludacris took a break from the Fast and the Furious set <laughs> but they like he so it came up again on Sky Movies and I was like do you know what I'm gonna go back and watch the force Fast and the Furious because it was stuck underneath Fia this week she wasn't too well after her little vaccines and um I was watching it and I was going, oh my God how different the force one was but even like because you know in the first few movies where they have like they're, they're doing this like car show and it's all show off and the girls are going around in hot pants and all this sort of stuff but Letty even her attitude towards some of the girls were like you slags fuck off like do you know that that kind of thing yeah. I was like oh my god it's just it's it's of a time isn't like, it I've already been with you I don't want to be with you again it's yeah. like what <laughs> oh, it's like no bitch get out it was like I was like, with you last weekend and I don't never want to be with you again Jessica <laughs> why are we what i was like yeah jessica <laughs> don't give it up jessica same Je- girl J- jessica's riddled <laughs> yeah you're, you're so right yeah. like, they should be called the unpacked <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> they should yeah. be called the unpacking millennial culture podcast oh stop it's just it's wild the way we used to like i'm delighted it. for the kids that they don't like well, they've put up a lot of digital shite but like at least they don't have to put up with everyone being told consistently well, that I do think we've come a long way like we we kind of ran so they can kind of walk now a little bit it's <laughs> not it's definitely not the way it should be but no we, no it's we, not. we did a bit of it we jogged we jogged so they can walk at a fast pace now like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're kind of like they're walking but not really yeah exactly we're doing something anyway that's not what this podcast is about yeah Although uh, I, I could wax lyrical, believe me. <laughs> well, we're talking about crossovers where celebrities did kind of really well outside of their own countries. I or like have to go and seek fame in another country, shall we say? Yeah, some of the ones that I came across, though, I was like, I obviously hadn't looked into them properly before, and I still yeah. don't have all of the details. Let's be real, but. Because it was a reading task, it wasn't a video task, Carla. Sorry, you could have went on TikTok I, and put in and put that into the search. Like you got to think outside the box, my girl. It is now. Mm-hmm. Oh, Why do I have to sp- <laughs> just watch the people who have done the research? Oh, that's such a much better idea. Now I have a few little facts. I'm going to spit some little facts. <laughs> She's going to spit some lyrics at us right now. But you see, the ones that I came across, they already found fame in their own country and then fucked off and did kind of elder. Like Brian McFadden, for instance. Y- yeah, I wanted yeah. to look into that because I was like, that'd be messy, and <laughs> it wasn't really that messy. It, it <clears> kind <throat> of right, so he left Westlife, yeah, and he claimed to be he claimed to himself he was the the most hated man in Ireland, and he was Why actually did he, be- he said that after he left Westlife. He was like the hate. Oh, hate sorry, I get it because all the young girls were like, "Why did you leave Westlife?" And okay, I, and I do okay. get that. Like, I could imagine like I couldn't imagine being like 
it face to face, you know, like walking down the street kind of yeah. kind of gig and like getting that abuse towards me or whatever. Like I know that we talk shit about celebrities, but the, the chances of them hearing this, I'm not talking about you, Lee from Blue, but the chances of them hearing <laughs> this are very fucking low. Because <laughs> for some reason you are in our, you are, you are around. Anyway, Lee um, from Blue did hear this. Well, that's because of rats. We got ratted out. <laughs> We did get ratted out in all fairness, but sorry, I want, I, I think I understand. Yeah. And to be honest, maybe I was a little young, maybe I was a little too young, but like, do you ever feel that, you know, when Robbie left take that, Mm. that was like, they had to have a press conference and people Mm -hmm. were bawling their eyes out. And it was like, you know, if you watch the Robbie Williams documentary, you see the girls being like, it's just not ever going to be the same. It's just never going to be the same. My life's never going to be the same. I lived with one of those. That was my <clears> sister. And it was like when the, what was that other big band in America? Was it Backstreet Boys maybe saying that they were splitting up or did they ever officially split up? Anyway, there was, there was like a few press, maybe new kids on the block, one of those. But it was kind of the thing where it was like, we've all to sit down and press conference this. Mm. And I just don't feel like Westlife were like, Oh, Carla, we've no the, the amount of we asked people to no, submit know, true, who true. they'd like to see for a halftime show, and fucking most mm. of them were Westlife. No, I get no. I'm not saying that they weren't big, but I'm just like, is it kind of a thing where it was like they saw it happen to other boy band members, so therefore he assumed it was happening to him, or was it actually happening oh, to him? Because yeah, yeah. in my head, in my head, he had quite a successful career after Westlife. Like he had he, a couple of Irish number one singles. He did. and yeah. dated one of the hottest women in australia mm-hmm. you know like that to me but this is, is a rick roaring success this is why i was saying like his move to australia was a little bit messy because uh, well like not not messy but like just a hot mess and kind of a little bit gas because like <laughs> he did this whole thing where so he was already with delta Godrum when he moved over and that was just like a, an extra reason Aside from being the most hated band in Ireland, an extra reason yeah. to go over, but it was just the the smell of, like, oh, I'm the, I need to go under the radar. Like, take a gap year, yeah, and just, just fuck off for a bit. Do, yeah. If you really want to do the music thing, take a gap year, write your album, do all this sort of stuff, and then come back. Don't fuck off to Australia and immediately try to get famous there. No, but did he not? Okay, so he, like, let's just think about it. You'll know the timeline more, right? So he left Westlife, came back and did Irish Sun is the only one I can remember, <laughs> which is fucking hilarious when you look back. And that was, like, everybody was like, actually brilliant music. Oh, but for but- someone who was not a lead singer, for yeah. someone who wasn't even, like, a vocalist really in the group, he had, like, a line or two on Uptown Girl. That's all I can remember. But for somebody who was kind of, like, a Nicky and a Keen. Yeah. Just like a cheeky looking blondie, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. let the two dark haired horses sing the lines. And then the other three are just like very good looking, clicking their fingers, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's kind of, I don't know. Then, so that happened. Obviously, he was very popular in the, obviously, best life were huge in the UK as well. Sure, yeah. Britain keeps saying Britain's biggest boy band. I'm like, mm, I don't think Louis Walsh would be OK with that. That's, that's I don't... One Direction UK, just fucking keep, keep with them there. Yeah, You have yeah, Niall. Yeah. <laughs> you four fifths of an. You took UK all our footballers. Yeah. You took all our fucking footballers. Okay, you took all of them. Okay, so oh, leave it, leave yeah. it. But then uh, he was married with Car- to Kerry. That was like a big tabloid, hmm. you know, drums, whatever else like that. They had the kids. Blah 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 blah. Then he kind of fucked off for a while because did the solo career happen? quickly after the leaving of the west life is what i'm trying to figure it out happened more so in australia he but well he he released really? stuff yeah it, so more he so. had a whole marriage to vogue williams as well you have to remember there, that was shoved in there too no but this is i'm talking about straight after he left this was from 2004 to 2000 it was seven years he lived in australia for nobody wrote with vogue after delta yes they Fuck broke off. up they okay. broke up in 2011 and he married Vogue in 2012. No. Okay. Sorry. In my head, Delta came after Vogue. No, 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 but then no. I was like, how would that make sense? Because they were together for him and Delta, I thought were like endgame. And everybody, and I felt really bad because that was when everyone was being like incredibly misogynistic toward Kerry Catone where they're like, she's such a mess and he's mm. moved on to a better bird. No, and I was, it was like, it was just, right. 
So he did all of his, and like you can kind of see his career started waning. And he like the first two or three singles, he was like did well, and then yeah. it all just started falling off a cliff. Then Do you know, same yeah. same with his albums and stuff like that. They were they were yeah. good to begin with, and then people just lost their fucking patience with him. Then Do you know what I mean? But then when he came back from Australia, and he he like another reason for that like he did a few appearances like yeah. judges and stuff like you know the same yeah. around his eating like he did the, the the bit but like he came back and his thing was uh like when he was getting interviewed and stuff like that about australia he was just like oh, it was horrible um yeah i didn't like living in australia it was just like i missed out on my kids growing up and i was like there was, there's just a like the <laughs> It gave me the kind of vibe where it was like, I'm moving to Australia. You have two kids. At Grand, I'll see them every weekend. Like, yeah. <laughs> did, did he not fucking realise? I have to do it for my career. I have to do it for my career. I'm like, your kids are... Okay. You didn't. You did it for Delta. You did it for the G. Like, he, I was just kind of going... It, it was just such a selfish fucking decision. And then he came back and he was just like, it was too far. It was too far. It was too long of a journey away from Seven the kids. years like, to figure out it was too far. You have... Fucking, yeah you have fucking kids then they were lit they were young really young when he left and it was like how did you think this was going to- i say fair fucking play to carry for sticking up with it but this isn't this is what i mean this is again how bad the media was back then that we were all like oh God, you know carry sacked off there and him after running as if we weren't like why the fuck have you left to go to a different continent and left your young children at home and thought that that was okay and then continue to fight your ex-wife in the media to make her look bad you fucking mad yoke dickhead like real justin timberlake energy off like just we were literally like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the whole world. Yeah, go for it. Oh, it was just mental. Like, so he did kind of, he kind of did all right over there. Probably not yeah. like, you know, not not kind of Catherine Ryan in the UK. All right, do you know what I mean? Just kind of yeah. a little bit all right. And then came back and looked like a fucking idiot. Then he did buy his life and, you know, he's married to a PE teacher now. And oh, she, you. yeah, Grant, that's, that's what you need. Like, sorry, you, need- you forgot he tried to fight ISIS. You forgot that. Oh fucking hell! Do you remember? <laughs> you forgot that. I can't believe you brought him. Like, up I was, sorry, I was concentrating on his his time in Australia, and it just the biggest thing that stuck out to me was him realizing that was real far away. <laughs> <laughs> we reading again. Australia's mad far. That's a real long mad country. far. Real That's mad far. Yeah, like feel mad far. Your world. Way too much to be visited. Like, and I mean, he like because I was kind of going. So he would have lived in. I don't know what his situation exactly was before he left because I know he was split from Kerry. So he knew of the having to fly to see her kids because he would have lived in Ireland and they would have been in the UK anyway. Mm. So like an hour tops of a flight yeah. to go and see her kids or vice versa, whatever the, the situation was. And I was like, did he think the same thing? It was just, it was like he was going to France. Did he think he was going to fucking France? <laughs> like it was Australia. Oh. Did he think it was the same thing? Like Grant, be Grant. Like maybe I'll just fly around the back of the earth. That'll be quick. <laughs> like, what did he think? I'll just take the shortcut. I'll just do the short way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That's mad. I completely forgot that he had very young children. Very young and, children. Like at that point in time, it's like decided that he did that he did that. I don't know. God knows because he is active in their life. He is, yeah. That's it. Like, um, and they kind of, I, I think they kind of co-parent now. Although Kerry will still get the good few digs in, which fair fucking plays were like, uh, absolutely. See, yeah. Like now that I like now that I'm really thinking about it, fucking hell, she yeah. had a rough hell ride. She did, yeah. So yeah. I was, yeah, I'd love to do actually a deep dive on her, um, just her her life because it's been mental. Like, and she did get that kind of shit in the the press, real kind of Jade Goody type of yeah, yeah. treat well, like oh. A misogynistic press where it was yeah. like you couldn't be you couldn't be a woman in general really without getting attacked by them no. and you couldn't yeah. like stick up for yourself and your shitty ex yeah. or the your shitty baby daddy for without looking like a fucking psycho yeah genuine yeah. that kind Mad. of stuff. that kind of yeah because i remember all the stuff it was like she's just so filthy jealous of delta good from one newbie look I, at delta i thought she was a fucking raging lunatic and yeah, i was Carrie. like 
Yeah, I was like, oh, what a fucking messy bitch. Like, that's what I used to think. I know. It's a real all of it. Like, it's just... It's crazy. The stuff that we used to, like, let happen and let go on is really pathetic. Oh, no, we need to fight that patriarchy. We need to I'm sorry, by we, I don't mean me and Jen. We weren't no, really yeah. the <laughs> We, we didn't have a podcast then. We didn't, no. Well, it's just in general, like you, like you say, the UK media, sure. Like, they still fucking put up cellulite shots of girls on the, the beach. So That's wild. That's so embarrassing. But I'm it's, like, who's clicking on that? Yeah. Who is clicking on that? Lindsay. <laughs> For Mater J. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But she now, like, she, she'd be only doing it for the crack. Like, she'd be actually taking the piss out of the article itself, I'd say. Yeah, because it was absolutely mortifying. But yeah, so that's kind of like, that's a, that's a perfect example of, of what we're talking about here. Someone else that I really want to talk about, because I, I found this mad, because I, I actually, I really, you know when people get put into, you know what we were saying about Black Eyed Peas, about Apple D app and Taboo, and how lucky they are to, like, just kind of, um, heaven! Yeah good time yeah. yeah and do their their little bits and bobs although we've also deduced that a taboo very very beautiful man yeah very oh, beautiful he should have been delayed william should have stepped aside and let taboo in off somewhere and just do the do the producing anyway but um i loved when you'd see someone a, a band would break up right mm. and like one of the people who was never the lead like and what, what i'm <laughs> yeah. talking about here is the pussycat dolls okay <gasps> Yes. Kimberly Wyatt, fair fucking play, babe. Because she made a career out of just being able to put her leg over her head. She did. She bashed out a full career in the UK. Yeah, to be fair. And do you know Miss what it was? Knew. But to Miss be fair, knew. like with with the, the Pussycat Dolls, and it was only ever, I wouldn't have known them by name. I knew she, Nicole, she was the lead, and Melody, just because she had like banging like she had a great voice well. she yeah. kind of did wah, wah. yeah 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 she was very michelle of of destiny child fame they like, could sing but didn't really have that <laughs> no not really yeah yeah it's kind of yeah. like yeah yeah but like me I'd, I'd, I'd be the same i have a fucking banging sing. voice no, but I can't <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem that's the that's only the problem, problem that flex didn't reach their dreams but i'm telling you you know um <laughs> so fucking stupid well she so but she did and i think because the pussycat dolls to be fair they were put on such a pedestal and they were i yeah. always got confused were they the stage pussycat dolls i don't think they were they were just like so some of them were and some of them weren't kimberly was a stage pussycat doll right it always yeah, yeah. confused me you know like the chippendales that's what the pussy yeah. Female version of the Chippendales was the Pussycat. I was like, real sexy ladies on. And then every, there, was, there was so much confusion. Where they'd stage people, is this just a band? Did they buy the rights to the name? Whatever. But they were so famous. They were so outrageously famous. But that that was because, again, at that point in time, that was, was everything. Going on. Like, yeah. girls singing about how, how hot they are and how much you want to be them and how, like, they could take your man off you. Yeah, and exactly. And be like, yeah, sure, you could. Yeah. <laughs> exactly but because they were so famous i feel like anybody with the like you know where their name comes up in the corner of the screen and then it says where they're from underneath it and the pussycat dolls comes up i feel like any of them could have made a huge career in the uk yeah because of that well i like i thought it was interesting because some of them just kind of left and were like nah fuck this i'm not doing this and i was like brave when you're in the biggest girl band in the world like you must have such a sense of like purpose and self because a mm. lot of people as we have seen would just stick around and go along for the ride yeah. Now again, money in fact, like they probably weren't even making that much money because obviously the deals back then were shite. You know, and the record so, companies were so shady and all that. Yeah, yeah, and you were probably just being touted around, got some few, like nice free clothes and stuff like that, but you probably weren't earning that much money. I say they weren't as, doing. I say they weren't as bad as the the bands in the UK, like or or Ireland mm. or like they wouldn't have gone. They wouldn't have gone like Westlife bankrupt. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they would I think they would have gotten a bit more just because it's America and I just feel like that well that's the impression that I get yeah fair I just think as well it's like I don't know I'd love to know what the rest of them are doing. I don't know how are you keeping well I, and that's what I always thought was interesting because I remember Ashley the other blonde dancer in Pussycat yeah Dolls, the big eyes she was dating yeah with the huge eyes she was dating that guy Kenny and he was on Dance Life which was like an MTV 
um series like following dancers they were trying to do at that time they were trying to do like a fucking making the band for everything and at that point they did this thing called dance life and that guy kenny is quite a famous dancer he's famous choreographer now back then this is like 2005 2006 he was in it and they followed like five or six different dancers like trying to like essentially earn a steady living wage on being Mm. a dancer and she was dating him and I remember that was the whole thing. He was like, yeah, I'm Kenny, blah, blah, blah. I really want to be known for my talent. But a lot of people know me as being Ashley from the Pussycat Dolls boyfriend. And I was like, Love that. no one knows Ashley from the Pussycat Dolls. So no worries. Oh, I would have. No, I would have. No, you'd know her. But I didn't know her name was Ashley. Oh, I wouldn't have known her name. No. no. no that's that's what I mean. I was like, I don't, I don't. Yeah. And now it's, it's well, it's not. It's cool to see him. Like he did that huge, you know, the way um the year or like, was it not the year? maybe 2017, 2018, MTV, w- one of the music awards or something did that huge Michael Jackson tribute. Mm, yes. He was one of the main choreographers for it, one of the main dancers. I was like, there's your man, Kenny. Very good. And he's now, shockingly, this is so wild how I know this, married to, do you remember LMFAO and Party Rock? Yeah. You know, the girl who just went, get a get ya no do, way do, 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 do. lauren bennett yeah and she was in robin at robin antin's other girl bands so this is how it all comes full circle so okay. she got her start in one of the 99 million girl bands that robin antin tried to do including grl of ugly heart fame yeah Jeez. Do you remember ugly heart yeah yeah <sighs> but she was in loads of and she did was in i think she was in a different version of like the, the pussycat like she was in she was in a million of them anyway she was in she was like one of Lar- like robin anton was like i'm making another girl band and lauren bennett who's from the uk was like sure perfect lovely i'll be in it then right um so yeah there you go everything so comes like full circle but america's answer to louis walsh he's still fucking making bands bless him who louis i know yeah. god bless him but yeah so robin yeah so i thought that was mad i was like look he dated one pus- pussy cat, one pussy cat doll, and then and now he's married to an adjacent pussy cat person. <laughs> yeah. Robin Anton universe. To be honest, I love the Robin Anton universe. It's insane, like the stuff that went down. Anyway, but I thought that that was mad. Back to this is not about Ashley. This is about Kimberly. So Kimberly, good on her, came over to the UK, and that's where I'm like, imagine the drive that you'd have to have to be like, I'm going to go to another market. Because they're kind of desperate for being, for for like D list celebs, I'm gonna go and be one. No, no. When you what? said, imagine the drive, I was like, did she drive? <laughs> Jen, did she drive? Did she drive to the UK? Did she? <laughs> How did she get there? I just for a split second, that's what I thought you were saying. <laughs> but like I'm very in delusional. a way, I'm very delusional. Yeah. Sorry. It's, 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 a, it's been a week you are, you are very delusional too <laughs> yeah I am to be fair but like fair fucks to her so she after being in the pussycat dolls mm-hmm. she has done <laughs> are you ready for the list her and Ashley Banjo are like besties aren't they yeah yeah, yeah okay. because there was that she was a judge on the British dance series got to dance do you remember yeah. that mm-hmm. and it had that hot guy from Coyote Ugly was the other yeah. yeah yeah i know everybody's like how do i know his face i'm like I yes that's a yes actually yeah. i think I, I was probably thinking that up until this day not enough to be yeah. asking you but Maybe like adam something i, I don't know beautiful yes. beautiful mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. australian great dancer love him loads yeah um actually i really want to re-watch coyote ugly because i was screaming out leanne rhymes there the I did at the Christmas. yeah <gasps> oh i'm so jealous tired banks like yeah i know so. i love it all um so she was on she did a comedy series called Poor Paul. She then did Got to Dance. She did her amazing song Candy with Agro Santos. Do you remember that? Oh, oh yes. come and get you some, come and get you some. Yeah. <laughs> and, her, and it was like Agro Santos and Kimberly Wyatt. And I was like, who the fuck is Kimberly and it was, Wyatt? It was no, giving, it was I giving me like that name now. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah, well, she's kind of like, I mean, she's been here for over a decade and mm. doing her thing has her kids here and everything then she had another band called her majesty and the wolves okay okay nothing happened there unfortunately then she did another dance show competition called live to dance okay she was a judge on that 
that was an American one. So she was like, maybe I go back home. Right. And then she was like, maybe I don't. Maybe I come back. <laughs> maybe I go back to the UK. And then she also did the jump. You know, the one that, um, isn't that where Spencer and Vogue met? I have no idea where they met. I think they met on one of those reality TV shows. I think it was the jump. Right. It wasn't Dancing on Ice. Anyway, so it was one of those. Then she did Celebrity MasterChef. She okay. also did another dance show called Taking the Next Step. Right. And then she also went back and did, the, sorry, she did the CB, CBBC series Almost Never as well. She played a, a music manager in that. Okay. That was, on, that was 2019 to 2021. Jesus. Right. Good for her. And then she went back to the Pussycat Dolls. Are they back together now? No, then they broke up. Do you remember? Um, was, yeah. Okay. And she went back. Do you remember they were supposed to do the tour and then it all came hit that Nicole was going to be paid a lot more money than everyone Matt, else. And then I Nicole knew. put her own money in or something like that. And yeah. do you remember they did react and they went on the X Factor in the water and it was, <laughs> and they were doing all the dancing and the swishing of the hairs and they were all looked fucking great. When was this in the last two years? To 2021. Oh God, no, I don't remember that. I, I yeah. stopped watching X Factor in like 2012, I think. Or sorry, 2020, apologies, 2020. Right, okay. Um. So, yeah. Oh, do you not remember that? That was a great song, actually. It was very old school Pussycat Dolls, but in a, in a cool way. Like, you didn't think it was an aff. You were actually like, I'm I'm dancing to this. It was actually a banger of a tune. 2020 was a weird year for me, Cara. Yeah, it was a weird year for everybody, I think, Jen. Um, so, yeah, so she went and did that. And then, finally, her last her last thing that she has done was she was on Dancing on Ice in 2022. Right, okay. There are 99 shows going on there. Yeah. And I think she said that she would do The Jungle. Yeah, I, that, I'm I'm surprised she hasn't already been on it. Yeah, there you go. And, um, oh yeah, she married a Brit anyway, so. A model, okay. British model. Lovely. Fair play. So, she was like, do you know what? The UK are embracing me. I'm going to do that. Yeah. For the next. So fair folks, because God mm. knows what any of the other girls are doing, to be honest. Yeah. That's fair. Um, Catherine Ryan is another one. Oh yeah, that she like came from. Well, she wasn't American; she's can- Canadian. Now, to be fair, I didn't realize she came over when she was so young. Like it, it, she's over there a good fifteen years now. I I don't know why I thought she like only came over in the last few only came over i'm not in the fucking uk but only went over you know in the the last few years kind of like last eight you know really would you know yeah i like she she kind of went over when she she'd done college and stuff like that over and her mom and dad it split up and uh, so like <clears throat> she was in <laughs> Kind of, like it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. She was in school and, and that, but then she came over or well, she went over to the UK and did a few courses or whatever. But then she just ended up getting into the comedy scene here, but never never went back to Canada to try it. Yeah. But like just got really fucking big in the UK. Well, would you bother? No, you wouldn't. But I'm just saying it's so funny that Catherine Ryan could go home. And like nobody would and be a no one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like she would go home and she like obviously she could do open mics and stuff like that but she just got so big in the uk that it was like what's the fucking point because she has a a show out uh, now called parental guidance (laughs) where she she has three kids and she had like so she had her first one um when she was 25 she thought she was going to be um going through pre like perimenopause like at a really early age so she wanted to get her kids or like she wanted to have a kid before that happened. There was like a, okay. there was a reason why she had a kid so fucking young, and like her her daughter now was like she's much older than her other two kids because Fena and what's our our little boy's name? I can't remember what our little boy's name is, but she like she was basically pregnant for the last two years. But she's going around different families now. This is her. It's a show on W. Uh, she's going around different families now, seeing how they're raising their kids because she's like, she's saying that she's kind of like not really in the comedy scene anymore and she kind of wants to get back to work and stuff like that. So she's trying to figure out how she's going to do that with the three kids or whatever. So she's got, it is a good show. Like, and she, she's quite funny. Um, But she's like, she's been on Nevermind the Buzzcocks. 
like eight out of ten cats. Like she's your face on mine. She's had loads of her own shows. She's two yeah. Netflix specials, and they're all what? yeah. Like she's she's gone fucking hella high water. She is successful in in the UK on the old comedy scene, and it just reminded me of like Des Bishop as well. Like he's from New York. And he's one of yeah. Ireland's biggest comedians, but he's gone back to New York now. He got married. He met his wife in... Anna Burner, yeah. Yeah, in... I, I didn't know who she was. Oh, I, did you know? I'm going I, to see her, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I looked her up last night. I don't know. Don't ask me why, right? This is... <laughs> I don't know why, because I'd never seen who Hannah was or what she looked like. And mm-hmm. just because he spent so much time in China, I just expected... You know the way Mark Zuckerberg and his wife. I just expected that family portrait. I don't know why. <laughs> and then I looked her up last night and she said, like, this fucking man-hating feminist. I was like, what? Who the fuck? And she's like, she's very funny. She's a comedian as well. But he's over there now in uh, in New York and he's doing the comedy cellar again. Because he's not, like if Des Bishop couldn't they walk all... down the street here. But they all do that in America, though. They all go back to their roots. They all go back to, like, the comedy stores, the comedy... Like, you have to remember, I was in L.A. in 2022 as Jimmy Carr hopped onto the stage and, like... No, that's... Started material in a fucking tiny club in Hollywood. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I... And I get that because he did say, like... He was on a podcast recently. It's, called, it's a new one called You Must Be Joking. I will say I've listened to it. And like, the world doesn't need more white men with a podcast, but this is Eric Lawler and Will I White. Do you know who Will I White is? No. He is one of the funniest fucking comedians. He will, and he's he hasn't done his own shows. He's only starting to line up his own shows now. Like I, when I was doing one of the road shows with uh, Enya, he was a support act. It was the first time I heard of him. He's always in the laughter lounge. He is fucking hilarious. His name is Will I White. He's from Ballymun. He's been in Mount Joy. Like he came out, he's been in three psychiatric ho- hospitals over his lifetime. He calls it the psyche hat trick. He's there like. So it's they're doing it with Joe.ie. And I'm pretty sure like when you listen to it, you're like, this was all pre-recorded in 2023. And they're just kind of releasing these episodes now with different comedians and stuff. Um, and yeah. it's very funny, I will say. And I love Will I. But he, uh, he, Des was on that. And what, what was I fucking going to say there? <laughs> <laughs> they were just, oh, he was talking about it at the Comedy Cellar and stuff. And he was like, no, Chris Rock will show up at it. Like, Oh, no, it, he was there he, at my one. He was in the back. He was there at my one. He came yeah. in because Netflix were having that uh, fest, comedy festival. And he was literally behind my, like three behind my table no on way. the wall. And that's and, and that other guy, like I can't remember Bill. What's his name? Bill. He's a huge comedian. I cannot remember Bill something. He what? was there. He did a set. Was he like yeah, Man from the Ghostbusters? Bill Murray. No. No. <laughs> oh no, God, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll. Anyway, I'll. Get, yeah. I can't remember. I'll find the list again. I'm sure at some point. But that's what they like. That's yeah. No, what they do, they do drop in now and again, but it's yeah. not their main thing. This is Des's main thing. No, I, I, oh, I know what you mean. He gigs like, yeah, but I suppose, like, Han, you know, Hannah Burner didn't start as a comedian. She started on Bravo. Yeah, she's, a, yeah, yeah, reality star, yeah. Just, yeah, but um, she's actually doing uh, her tour in Ireland this year in May. She's in Vicar Street. But yeah, they met, I don't know how, I think they met through like some, you know, celebrity thing that's kind of ended up like that's how they met but they had like a whirlwind romance it didn't take them long to get like Six married months, and all that other yeah. Kind of stuff yeah. Yeah, yeah and that was wild because everybody was like i can't believe des i can't believe like ireland now has like a claim to hannah burner you know I mean? yeah yeah I, I honestly i didn't know who she was but then like you, <clears throat> like reality shows and stuff yeah. like that and that i wouldn't be into them as as much as most people but yeah he came over here so but he came over here in like when he was 14 which yeah. i didn't realize either because I, I've gone to see Des and like he would be slagging people because he like he has the act he, he has the language down he has the accents down and you know he he kind of said about people coming up to him he was like Jesus by you know laws about us and you know all this sort of stuff and he's like yeah because I'm here longer than you're fucking alive do you know that kind of thing yeah. and I didn't I, I don't know I just never really thought about it all that much but when I was reading the timeline of it I was like actually he's like he'd be you know He's more Irish than he is American, but he's just, it's because he, where he, he grew up and he came over here, found massive success. Like nobody in Ireland doesn't know Des Bishop. 
Yeah, true. True. Whereas he can just kind of walk around New York and like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, so yeah. fucking crazy to me. Same with Catherine Ryan. It's just, she's so fucking famous in the UK, but nobody at home would probably, you know what I mean? Lift, like raise an eyebrow at her. Yeah. Do you know? And I did, I went, I ended up going back on a few of Des's things like that he's done over the years, like in the name of the Fada and Joy in the Horde. And they talk about Joy in the Horde on that podcast. Um, that's how Willa and Eric got their, their big breaks was that he did that show with them because he was going around to disadvantaged areas. It was an, originally supposed to be a concept of him plucking some fellas out with Mount Joy to start a comedy career and follow them through that. But Will asked said, no, I, like, I didn't want to do that because I didn't want people knowing about me past. I wanted to try and make it as a funny man force and then tell me story under my terms or whatever. So that idea never took off the ground anyway. So he was like, I'm actually going to go around different um areas so the fourth one was Ballymun and they had like six he did a workshop with them and by the end of it they basically did a comedy set in the access by the end of it and then he went around to Knocknaheeny like there was a few different places like I was like he's around fucking years like yeah that's mad and he's like he's moved to China he know he's fluent in Mandarin he's fluent in Irish like he's fucking a smart man like yeah yeah so it was just it was fun it was fun going back on that it was fun finding out about desi if you will yeah yeah Mm. so now like so sorry another thing that i think that we also have to give a shout out to is like uk end of career celebrities shall we say okay coming to ireland and having a career okay mainly on the voice of ireland (laughs) yes so on the voice we had Obviously, The Voice originally started with Keen Egan, Brezzy. Yeah. Five seasons of The Voice Ireland, by the way. Mad to me. I thought I had two. Yeah. <laughs> Mad to me. I had two. And um, so it was Brezzy, Keen Egan, Sharon Core, and Brian Kennedy, which is like an iconic. But Dolores O'Riordan was on that for a good while. Yeah. So then once. Who left first? Brian Kennedy left first. Mm Lindsay Hamilton be devastated. She was part of his team. <laughs> oh God, I forgot she was on that. I'll never let her forget. The amount of people I know that went on to that. Fucking hell. Yeah. The amount of people I know oh, that went on to that. I know. My cousin was on it. Hilarious. Mm. But anyway, so she, or sorry, he left and Jamelia came in. Yes. Jamelia. Yes, yes. came in. I yeah. remember Jamelia. Yeah. Yeah. Of like what two album fame in the UK, mm. and then but again like massively successful for a very short period of time. Then kind of like stepped out of the limelight, had their family, and then come and be like do a show in Ireland, kind of gas. Anyway, would would love to have the the money that they obviously had to kind of like throw at these people at this point in time. Then sh- then Sharon left, and Dolores came in, mm. and then Jamelia and. Or sorry, Jamelia left and Rachel Stevens came in. Rachel Stevens. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then I think, did Dolores leave? All I know is that Keen and Brezzy stayed the whole five. Yeah. As yeah. they would, yeah. As they would. But yeah, good L. Or sorry, no, Dolores left and Jamelia left and Rachel Stevens and Una, uh, oh, Fodden at the time. What's her name now? Healy. Una Healy. Fuck's sake. Yeah. Came yeah in. I don't think I stuck around watching it as long. Like, I wouldn't have remembered all of that going on. And that was the last season that they <laughs> did. And then they were doing an interview because they were basically, of course, as everybody is, everyone's like, Una and Rachel are now going to be like Cheryl and uh, Danny Minogue, you know, style, style offs every Saturday and, you know, that kind of <laughs> shit. Oh. And they did a very famous interview where. They were both kind of saying about like how, you know, they, they're, Una was saying she's sisters with Rachel, you know, she was in a girl band, she loves girls, no, like, and to be honest, I don't, I can't imagine either of them ever having a scrap, Do you know, they just don't seem the type. No. But they were both asked who their favourite The Voice of Ireland winner was because they had both just said it's their favourite show, they watch it every weekend Oh. And Rachel was like, I watch it every weekend with my family. And it was like, it's just a brilliant show. And they're like, who's your favorite winner? Both went silent. Oh. 
Oh my god. And then they asked, can you remember any winners? And they both said no. Neither can I. Can you? No, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I'm yeah, not a judge on it. I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting paid no, to know my show. Blame. Yeah, no, that's fair. That is very fair. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Who's the other one? It's very right. What? Mortifying. Yeah, I know. Uh, there's another um, English celeb who like just got fucking always shows up. She's like Rachel Stevens. She was in was it Liberty X? Who? Michelle Heaton. Michelle Heaton. She's always she's showing married up as well. to an Irish. What? She's married to an Irish billionaire. Okay, right. Well, fair play to her, yeah. but she does show up now fair and again, and she's like, "Here's fucking Michelle again. How are you?" <laughs> yeah. She she was doing a bit of that actually. Now that you say it, she was doing a bit of that, but then at the same time, like she married an Irish bloke. So I yeah. don't know if he was a billionaire. He's a millionaire anyway. I think he is a millionaire though. I could be wrong, but anyway, he's a very, very, very wealthy Irish man. And he's is he still living in Ireland? Yeah, I think they live in. Do they live in Kerry or Cork or something? Oh, nice. Right, okay. Yeah, like, and they live a fucking great life on the L yachts and living their best life. Nice. Or not Michelle Keegan, Michelle Heaton. Yeah, we said Michelle Heaton. Heaton. Yeah, Michelle Heaton. Yeah, Heaton. Yeah, I was like, not Keegan, Jesus Christ. No. Very different. Very different people. Very, very um, different. Yeah, no, she, yeah, she's married to this Irish guy because um, she did the whole uh, sports thing for a while, didn't she? I, yeah, there was just, she's shown up on a few of the, the shows, but like that, she kind of was so famous for a really short time that she's just got that name for herself now. It's just like, oh yeah, well, if she's shown up, oh, weren't we very fancy? Hugh <laughs> Hanley is his name, by the way, everyone. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, Hanley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that she had addiction issues. There you go. Oh, okay. Didn't know that either. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, and he has often came out and spoken about her time in rehab and being a supportive husband. Why? That's mad, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't oh, know. and she got married to him pretty quickly after. Because do you remember she was with um, Andy Scott Lee? She... Do you remember yeah. three three Scott Lee? Do you remember? <laughs> Sorry, Fanula just, just did an episode on them. By the way, I did, yeah, yeah. Culture. Yeah, she just did an episode on them. Um, but yeah, there you go. Fuck's sake, they all merge into one for me. Like no, those, I haven't actually. Um, kind of people, the, the Scott Lees or yeah. those kind of. Elise Scott Lee, Rachel Stevens, and Michelle Heat, and I'm just like this, the bang of the same energy off you, in my opinion. But like, obviously, not know much about them. Like, I had no idea that Michelle had addiction issues. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Yeah, there you Good go. Old Hugh Hanley, but a, mad another person who has kind of been rocking around. Um, Arlande. They're both mad into the gym. They're both mad into like coaching and all that other kind of stuff. All right. Pretty good. Yeah, so there you um, go. Right. We're going to wrap this up and go and record our Patreon episode. But before we go, I have an unpopular opinion. I know I still would get it done. But you see them fucking vaccines. I can see why people yeah. are anti-vaxxers. <laughs> oh my God, Jen. She's a fucking nightmare, Carla. I mean, not... she's a baby, Jen. Oh, she no, doesn't Jesus understand. Christ, why do this to them? Do you know what I mean? Three fucking injections at the same time they have to get, as well as an oral one. And a tiny baby with no fat on their legs. Three separate injections. I'm like, that's a lot. Yeah, but then she's going to be safe, so. I know, it's just a fucking lot. Like, I'm just, it's a flippant, don't don't argue with me. Obviously, I'm going to like, follow through with the old vaccinations and stuff like that. But fuck me, it's a lot. They need to change the system up a little. They need to have a look at that. Okay. Just take a break from like the RTE for a minute and have a look <laughs> at the vaccinations and the little babies, please. I have a call out for you, actually. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. Thanks a million for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and should look. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.